Okay, so here is the new PC board layout for Zero's Constant Current PWM and this is the board that will fit inside the Velleman G106 sealed die cast aluminum enclosure. You'll notice along the left hand side are the trimmer potentiometers for the current limiting, the percent duty cycle, and the frequency adjustment. They are horizontally polarized or horizontally oriented trimmer potentiometers simply because I had a lot of them laying around in my parts boxes. You could easily just use the square ones that have the uh, trim pot adjustments on the top and drill holes in the top cover of the box to make your adjustments from the outside or remove the top cover to make your adjustments and have it completely sealed all the time. It doesn't really matter. On the right hand side at the extreme right you'll notice the voltage regulator chip. The diagram says 7808. It doesn't really matter. The, the schematic says 7810. Uh, you can use a 7809. The point is to choose a voltage that's high enough for the circuit to operate, low enough for it to regulate with a 12 to 14 volt input range, which is what you're going to get in the car. So you probably don't want to go any higher than the 7810. Uh, this allows for enough padding for the um, voltage regulator to operate itself. All right. So next step, we'll move on to the assembly process of the PC board. Here are all of my components ready to be assembled. And there is my trusty soldering iron all warmed up, ready to be used to create the board. Um, I want to remind you that all of this information, the um, new schematic diagram with the revised component values and the drawing of the PC board layout, is at the website alt-nrg.org, my website. So you can find all of this revised information there now. And as soon as I'm done creating the printed circuit board, I'll have a photo up there for you as well too. But you're going to see it assembled here. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set this aside and working from the schematic diagram and the parts layout that I printed from the website. Just going to dump my parts out and I'm going to start populating the board first knowing where the wires are going to connect um, I will probably start with uh, components that are closest to the integrated circuit and work my way away from the integrated circuit so uh, let's just say we'll start with R2 which is a 22k resistor red red orange is the color code All right. And I'm just going to preform the leads to insert it into the board. And look at the diagram and count number of the pins. And this is going to be inserted through the board like that. So there's my first resistor assembled to the printed circuit board next to the integrated circuit. These are the two electrolytic capacitors. I've already assembled those. Basically I just did that because I wanted to see some parts assembled to the board. I was getting anxious. Alright, now here comes the tricky part. Uh, I know that R2 is going to connect to pin 3 of the integrated circuit chip. So this lead this lead right here for the resistor is going to bend back towards the board and toward the chip. And there's another resistor that connects to that same strip and that's R3 which is a 10k resistor. So I'll push pin 3 of the integrated circuit chip toward the resistor. Like that. And I'm going to push the resistor lead toward the integrated circuit chip. Holding it down. And again, continually referring to the diagram, I know that that lead is not going to extend any further beyond pin 3, so I'm just going to take my cutters and remove this excess lead right here. And I'm going to solder that into place. 
Now when you're soldering a electronic component lead, you need to remember that you need you have to apply heat to the wire first and let the solder flow onto the wire because the wire is hot. Not you do not want to apply solder to the tip of the soldering iron and then put it to the work because it's not going to flow onto the work. It flows onto the tip because the tip is hot. We want it to flow onto the work so we have to heat the work first. And of course the balance that you have to achieve there is you can't overheat the work. So we just create that solder joint like that. And I hope this shows up well on camera. I I don't know how well that's going to show up, but... And the only other resistor that's going to connect to pin 3 of the LM324 is R3, and that is a 10K resistor, so I'm going to assemble that one next. That is brown, black, orange. Again, I just preform the leads of the resistor. Assemble it to the board like that. Okay. And now I know that it only has to extend a tenth of an inch over to make a solder connection to the 22K resistor. So I'm just going to trim this lead right now. And I need to continually hold it on camera here. Alright. Now I'm just going to push the lead down against the where the 22K came through the board. And once again, I'm going to clean the tip of my soldering iron on a wet sponge. And then I'm going to apply a quick dab of solder on that as well. And that junction is complete. All I need to do is continu continue to work my way out away from the integrated circuit chip in that same fashion until all the components have been assembled to the board and uh, wired and check it for solder shorts. Make sure there's no uh, no short circuits in between leads that I don't want them to, don't want to be connected, and then I have a working circuit. Easy, right? Not so easy. I was up until 2 a.m. just putting together the hand-drawn parts layout. So, uh, there's a lot of work involved here. To get this done, it will be at least another day uh, before this is completely done. If I get this done today, I'll be burning the midnight oil again tonight, that's for sure. So, there is the start of the project. I hope you enjoyed this, to this the beginning of the tutorial series. I'm going to um, continue building this and I will have a few snapshots along the way to show you the progression as it comes together. Zero fossil fuel, have fun, don't burn yourself on your soldering iron.